In this video, we'll measure the angle of a rotary encoder as an example of how you can work with counters and timers on your data acquisition hardware. So this is not supported by all uh, DAC devices, um, but there are many that do support counters and timers, and we support most NI devices that have counters. And there are a few different measurements that you can get from counter inputs and outputs. In MATLAB, you can use counter input channels uh, to count edges of rising or falling edges, count frequencies or pulse widths, or count or measure uh, positions as the angular position on a quadrature encoder shaft. You can also use a counter output channel uh, for pulse generation to create PWM signals. So I'll go through a demo where we use the position uh, measurement type to measure angular position of a rotary encoder. And so here we see a picture of the rotary encoder I have. Um, clamped onto my desk and the shaft of it, if we see from the other side, is connected to a pendulum with a small weight at the bottom and I can swing this back and forth and then measure the angular position. So I'll walk through this demo using a live script. Uh, if you're not familiar with a live script, this is a really good way to to share uh, the results of code or analysis that you've done. It's basically just like a regular script in that it uh, has code that's executable, but it, it also has the addition of rich text and things like titles and headings, and equations, uh, and so on that make it much easier to read. So as we saw from the automatically generated code, we can use DAC.create session to create a data acquisition session. And by default, that creates a session uh, that will run for one second at a thousand scans. We can then add a channel, in this case a counter input channel, to that session. Well actually if I go back and say uh, dac.getDevices we'll see that the uh, dev1 is the name of my uh, USB DAC device, USB 6255, which is what I have the encoder plugged into. So I chose dev1 as the name in my code here. And you'll see the channel has a number of interesting properties. Um, the terminals of the uh, quadrature encoder, A, B, and Z, are the leads that come out of it. And this object tells us uh, where they should be plugged in in the um, DAC device that I'm using. And we have the option of uh, enabling a Z reset so that every time the encoder passes through a specific value, it can reset to a location. This is really useful for uh, accurate positioning types of applications like you know, satellite tracking and uh, robotics and other really fine control applications. Okay. So again we can see what the pins that we need to connect wire things up to. We can specify what type of encoder we want and then we can go ahead and just read uh, the position of the encoder. And we see that currently it's at position 0, uh, but if I pull it off to the side at some angle, and run that again, we see it's at 152. So what angle is it at when it's at 152? Well, we can figure that out by knowing that there are 2500 quadrature cycles per shaft revolution, uh, 360 degrees per revolution, so if the position is at 152, it's at an angle of 21.8 degrees. Now say we want to collect some data over time. We can configure some parameters of the session, the rate and the duration. So I'll collect 10 seconds worth of data. And now we see that uh, the session object will run for 10 seconds, 100,000 scans at 10 kilohertz, and it has one channel which is a counter input measuring position. So let's see if that's sufficient to start collecting data. it looks like we can't actually use start foreground yet and this error message gives us some insight as to why. So it turns out this channel that the uh, device is connected to doesn't have a clock so it needs an external clock to be supplied uh, in order to do this type of uh, clocked acquisition or hardware timed acquisition. But it also mentions that you can use the internal device clock of this DAC module if you include uh, any analog subsystem right, either an analog input or output channel. So if we add an analog input channel, and so this time if I try to run the start foreground command, I can run it, pull the pendulum off to the side and release it, and start acquiring data as the pendulum is swinging back and forth for 10 seconds. 
and now let's plot the data that we got. So now we we did acquire 10 seconds worth of data, but we got some very strange results, right? And it looks like if I pop out this figure, sometimes the when it was swinging in a certain direction, we got values of 4.29 times 10 to the ninth. Now what's happening here is that the encoder returns values as unsigned integers, but because these are unsigned integers, if it swings backward through zero, then it actually wraps around to two to the 32 minus one. Uh, and so if we want to turn these actually into negative angles, we can do that here uh, by specifying a threshold and de defining that values above that threshold are actually negative. And then convert those values from counts into degrees, as we did before. And now the plot shows us something much more reasonable, uh, plotting the angle of this pendulum over time. So we saw how you could use counter timers for measuring the position of a rotary encoder. And I also briefly mentioned that you can use a Z reset to reset a reference to a reference signal uh, when you pass through a certain point, and that's useful for accurate positioning applications.